Fountain, 1917, Marcel Duchamp. A urinal bot in a small plumbing store in New York City. Rotated 90 degrees, signed with the words, R. Mutt, 1917. <coughs> Was sent to a public exhibition hall one December day. Attached, the $6 submission fee requested by the museum. The piece was returned back to the sender, along with their $6 contribution and a note. The message sent was quite clear. This is not art. Flash forward to 2004, Fountain is voted the most influential works of modern art by 500 art world professionals. It defied the norms of contemporary art, changing the view of millions as to what art is and what it could become. Good afternoon. My name is Elena Matinha, and I will be discussing the inadequate answers to art, that being the answers to the questions, what is art, what makes it good or bad, and who gets to decide. So let me ask, is Fountain a work of art, or rather a purchased urinal, which would be better utilized in a bathroom stall in France? Is Fountain any good, or does it display the unfortunate fall from classical art? Which experts are right? The ones who claim Fountain is vulgar and plagiarized, or those who claim brilliance, a piece reshaping the narrow foundations of art? In order to answer these questions, we must first consider the different definitions for the term art. In his book, What is Art?, Leo Tolstoy writes this. It may be quite long, but it hardly says anything. Does a urinal join men and women together in the same feeling, give them a sense of union, address the progress towards the well-being of individuals and of humanity? <sighs> so we turn to Kant. Plato. Picasso. Merriam-Webster's Dictionary. Art is something that is created with imagination and skill, and that is beautiful, or expresses important ideas or feelings. But what is beauty? And what is important? Once again, we face questions of ambiguity. Do any of these definitions suffice? I would argue, no, and that is what makes art so interesting. What is considered art is constantly changing because of its subjective nature, and we need to start being comfortable with the fluidity of definitions and of subjects. In the film, Mona Lisa Smile, Catherine Ann Watson, a new art teacher at Wesley College, asked her students to examine Carcass by Soutine, created in 1925, following with the question, is it any good? Betty Warren, one of the art students, argues that the piece fails to follow basic standards of art, rules of composition, color, technique, subject, hence concluding that the piece isn't any good. But are the rules of color, composition, technique, subject, are they set? Or are they simply a manifestation of Betty's limited exposure and understanding of art? There's an old proverb that goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But what if we change that word beauty to the word art? Are we then allowing the merits of a piece to be decided on by each individual according to their definition of what art is? And if we do that, are we neglecting to recognize the art world? The history of museum display decisions, celebrity art choices, art history majors. I don't know the answer to that. What I do know is that our definition of art changed in 1772 when Francisco de Goya was first allowed to paint frescoes for the Zaragoza Cathedral, despite the backlash that his art faced for failing to follow basic rules of art. In fact, until then, anything but traditional art was simply not accepted as art. Francisco de Goya 
defied the status quo. What we consider as good art changed in 1890 when Vincent van Gogh sold his first and only painting, The Red Vineyard. Until then, the brushstrokes used by van Gogh were not considered good art techniques. In fact, it was only after he passed away that his art became influential. Van Gogh defied the status quo. What the art world defined as art changed in 1905, when Alfred Stieglitz and Edward Steichend formed the little galleries of the photo secession in New York City. Until then, photography was not legitimately considered as an art form by most art professionalists. Stieglitz and Steichen defied the status quo. Therefore, I would argue that the greatest artists weren't great because of the intrinsic value of their art. Fountain is, in essence, a urinal bot in a small plumbing store with a few words prescribed on the back. The, the greatest artists were great because of the way their art challenged or defied the status quo. Bob Eager, the CEO of Disney, once said that the riskiest thing we can do is just maintain the status quo. But sometimes the status quo suffices. We should simply consider its merits, rather than accepting what is because of what is. Therefore, I would argue that the riskiest thing we can do is not question the status quo. This applies to fine art but also to politics, policies, literature, ideas, and music. We, as humans, like consistency. So we try to put ever-changing objects with weird shapes and different colors into structured boxes so that they are easy to categorize. The problem arises when we forget that the subjective definitions we set on ambiguous terms are just that, subjective. Forget that before there was a box, there was an ever-changing object with weird colors and different shapes. You know what art is. You know what it feels like and what it looks like when you first see it. But so do you. And, well, so do you. And you might even be reconsidering your initial answer to whether Fountain was a work of art. But that is okay because each of us have different definitions for the term art. And those definitions can and will change over time due to our exposure to ideas or culture. Despite this, I'm not asking you to change your definition of art. Despite trying, I could not come up for a definition for an idea that encompasses so much. Instead, I truly believe art much like opinions, understanding, ideas, they reside in the eye of the beholder. That's you. And so I'm simply asking you to change your perspective of art and to change your perspective of how you see it, why you see it that way, and what it means about you. Thank you. <laughs>